This is a neon flicker flame lamp, and I was absolutely fascinated by these as a kid. I ended up getting quite a few from a collection of, you know, general illuminated stuff. And what's interesting about them, well, what's especially interesting about this one, is it's defective. This one came from a Chinese seller called Yinan, Y-N-A-A-N, £1.37, bargain, except you only get half a neon lamp. The other side is completely black. It does not glow at all. And the reason for that is because... Uh, to optimise the flicker, they seem to have some sort of insulating layer on one side of these plates and the other side is a conductive layer. And in this case, they've got both the conductive sides pointing this way, so the inside of the tube is actually flickering where it can't be seen, and the, then this electron on this side is flickering. It's also interesting to note that what you're getting in the camera here is a very patchy, it's obviously taking little snapshots of it, and it's making it look like very small patches of light. But what I'm getting is large areas of light just sort of flickering about gently because um, it's the persistence of our vision, so to speak, is kind of uh, softening that. The camera is definitely taking lots of sort of snapshots of that. It's quite interesting. Now, the way these operate is quite interesting as well because um, they're based on the classic little neon indicator lamp like this where, you know, you've just got two electrodes and you put a resistor in to limit the current and uh, one of the, the electrodes, both of them, or one of them glows. It depends on how you actually run them. So, things worthy of note. Uh, only one side of this is lit at a time. Only the negative side actually lights up. So what's actually happening in this lamp, because it's an AC, is it's actually jittering backwards and forwards between the two electrodes. And that also happens these little neon indicators. And if you put a diode in series, then it effectively um, only one of these little... Um, Electrodes would glow. And likewise, if you, well, let's say, uh, draw it as the lamp. So here's the candle glow. Here's the flame inside. The wires coming down, the support wires. Um, and then the sort of pinch seal at the bottom, and then the actual base that's going to screw into the lamp holder. And in these, these as I say, they're just the same as, as the little neon indicator lamps. They've got the two electrodes, but uh, one of them will possibly just go straight to the sort of threaded cap. And the other one will go via a resistor. And the resistor can go in either of those leads. And the main point of the resistor is to limit the current, because if it wasn't there, these would uh, just sink as much current as they could. And it also controls the amount of uh, area of the uh, flame that's illuminated. If the resistor was a low enough value... Uh, progressively more and more of that flame would be illuminated to the point the whole thing was just lit up like a neon indicator. And if you overdrove it, and I did this, I uh, got a lamp from America when I was visiting, and it was two half spheres the size of almost like a ping pong ball. And they sort of shimmered over the surface, and I thought, you know, just briefly I'll put it on 240 just to see if it just makes the whole thing light up. And it did, but it also sputtered quite rapidly. Uh, the metal was effectively sprayed off from the electrodes and coated inside the lamp, and it went black very quickly. And also it was really stressing the resistor. And this is where these little resistors are a problem in the UK, because whereas in America you've got, uh, or, or other countries with 100 to 120 volts, you tend to drop, say, about uh, 50 to 90 volts across the, the actual the flame itself, and the rest is dissipated across the resistor's heat. But in the UK, uh, because our voltage is a lot higher uh, in this region of 230, 240, 250, um, you end up dropping about, say, 150 to 200 volts across that resistor at the same current. And it means that this is a very common mode of failure of the British lamps. Uh, for a start, we end up with a smaller flame. The American ones tend to have more sort of, because they can for the same size resistor, they can have a larger area. We tend to have the smaller flames and the resistors in the base tend to burn out. The, the bases get very, very hot. I did a video about that, how you can get the little uh, candelabra type thing, the lamps, the ones for the set of Christmas arches. And you can actually add, inside the candle, you can add a resistor, another resistor or a little capacitor. And it will save the lamp life considerably because it's always the little resistor that seems to burn out. So... It follows that if you increase the value of that, that resistor, you can actually make it glow. You can actually change the activity. You can change it from a larger area of glowing to a smaller area, and it tends to be more flickery. And the reason it flickers about on the surface is the same reason that these flicker when they're sort of um, getting old or if you underrun them. If you underrun the neon, it covers that smaller area, and 
because of a thermal effect, I don't know if it's the rarefication of the gas at that point or the excitation of the molecules spreading apart, but it seems to have a thermal effect that as it heats up, um, the area of emission of light tends to move about on the flame. Now, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how the current affects the appearance of the flame, and I'm going to do that by getting up the quick block and soldering some leads onto this. I wonder what this, uh, this, I wonder what metal this is. I'll soon find out and I'll try soldering it. So I've got to solder a couple of leads onto this lamp and then uh, I'm going to connect a variable resistor. I'm going to use my little resistor substitution box here and I'm going to change the resistance in series with it to actually uh, have the effect of reducing the glow area just to see what happens really, more than anything else. So let's bring the soldering iron in. I should have uh, taken stuff off the soldering iron cable before doing this. So let's uh, put a bit of solder on here. If this is going to stick, is this? Is, it looks awfully like aluminium. If it is aluminium, then I'm onto plums, am I? That's annoying. Uh, this could be a good time to experiment with that uh, soldering aluminium. Oh, actually, the solder's just taken. That's good. That's a. Uh, that's a, a start. Rightio. You can apparently solder aluminium uh, if you use oil to pre prevent. If you use oil and then you scrub the aluminium so it uh, cleans the oxide off, then the oil momentarily prevents the oxide reforming. Now, hopefully this is going to stick on properly and it's not going to suddenly pop off and have a live wire pinging about everywhere. Okay, am I confident in that? Yes, I am. What? What's the worst that could happen? Well, apart from the live wire pinging off. So now I'll solder this lead onto the bottom of the lamp. This should hopefully be easier. Let's tin this lead first. And get some fresh solder on the bottom of this because I'm guessing it's lead-free solder. Not so critical in this instance, I don't think. Ooh, that's going to take a lot of heat. Yes, it is. Let's at least get some of it melted and uh, get that rammed in. Blowing it to cool it down, accelerate the process slightly. So let's uh, get this into the quick block now. And this is quite interesting because every time I bring the quick test in, people ask where they can get it from and it's often bemoaned that, you know, it's only available in European colours. Well, good news. Cliff, uh, is it, who, who is it? Uh, it's Cliff, isn't it? Cliff. Electronic components are now doing it in American and Canadian colours. Um, so you can now get it, not just in the single phase, but the three phase version uh, in the uh, Canadian and American colours. So um, I think these are available from Amazon. Uh, and uh, it's a really useful tool, very, very useful tool. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to stick the live onto the outside of that, just because, well, that's how it turned out. I'm going to get this little bit of wire here. In hindsight, that was a... I'd have been better with a, the live one in the end, but it doesn't matter, that's how it's turned out. What's the worst that could have happened? Uh, I'm going to stick this in set to 100k initially, which is quite a high value, and I'm just going to pop that in line. And close that down, and which side of the lamp is going to glow? See how it's a tiny area now, and it's really more active. Um, and if I turn that down even more, the area that's glowing will gradually get smaller until it's quite psychedelic. It's quite interesting, actually. That is just like little bolts of lightning going across the surface. That is quite neat. I don't know if you're really seeing that. You're also seeing this knee and outperforming this at the moment. And likewise, if I turn it right round, as I increase it, you'll just see it gradually gets more and more coverage up to the point that the resistor inside is the one that's actually the, having the greatest effect. So that just leaves the question, well, you know, we could do another experiment here. We could do the diode experiment. Let's do the diode experiment because I do have a diode. So, if I just uh, get rid of the 
resistance substitution box. I love this little resistance substitution box. I got it ages back. It was it used to be sold by Tandy. I think the only people that I know who sell it now are J-Car um, in Australia. Um, so let's get a diode and try it in one way round first. So if I just stuff this diode in here, add on to there, and close that down, it's just that, oh no, it is, it's the outside that's glowing, but the back panel isn't glowing at all now. And if I then swap the polarity of that diode round, theoretically both outside shouldn't glow and it should only be the middle of that that's glowing. And that's exactly what's happening. It's just the inside that's glowing because that has been assembled incorrectly. That's interesting. Right. So now the question I want to know is the inside of this, these little metal sort of flame-shaped plates, these electrodes, I'm not sure if they're made of some... I don't know how they make sure that it only flickers on one side, so to speak. Uh, the only way I can really think of that... Uh, it could be they've put the emissive coating on one side and the non-emissive coating on the other, because I'm guessing that this starts off as a sheet of material that's coated on, on both sides and then the flame shapes are punched out and then spot welded onto these little electrodes. But I'd like to get in there with a test meter and see, is the dark side, this is where I should actually have tested this beforehand. Oh, one moment, I'm going to have to bring the quick test back up again. So I know which side of the, of the flame is which. So let's... Uh, Stuff this back in, I can use a different polarity this time. Close it down, and this is the dark side, so I'll put a little black dot, or a little X on that side, and because I know the other side then is the side that's got the, the flicker happening on it. Okay. And what I'd like to know is whether that's still conductive, the side that doesn't glow, and it's just given priority because it's less emissive, shall we say, it's less receptive to the discharge. Um, because you'd think uh, with the two electrodes so close it would only want to glow in the middle. And the only way I can think of finding this out is to put this back in its box, and then bring in, and you know what's going to happen here, the vice of knowledge. So the vice of knowledge is now exercising its ability to release knowledge. Oh, it's just released the knowledge. Oh. Will it still work? I don't think so. We could power it up anyway. Nothing will happen. Let's uh, shake all the bits of glass off first and then I'll clean that off afterwards. So. This side was the dark side, so let's get the meter in and put it to continuity and see if that does have some sort of insulating layer on it. So, meter in continuity. It's not slightly conductive, but not very conductive at all. It really is quite... It's covered in something that's kind of creating an insulating layer. The other side... is more conductive, but not that much more conductive. I'm guessing it must be down then to having some sort of... Um, I wonder if there's something... I wonder if that's a surface that actually changes its resistivity. You know, like a um, thermistor that increases its resistance as the... Um, I could swear this has also changed colour since it opened it. I think it may be oxidising. But I wonder if it changes its resistance as it heats up, and that also cre helps create the flickering effect. But certainly I was expecting... I was kind of expecting both sides to be slightly conductive, and they kind of are. Yeah, that side is... It's somewhat less conductive. It must have a set of insulating layer sputtered onto it, or sprayed onto it, whereas this side... If you know what, it, it f seems almost the same, doesn't it? That's odd. There's some weird science going in here that I'm not privy to. Next thing. What size is the resistor inside? The only way I'm going to get that resistor, that knowledge, is to uh, start opening this. And the best way I've found to open these in the past is just to go straight in with the snips into the side. 
Oh, I can see the resistor already. It's a conventional looking resistor. Any, this is a point you can start guessing the value. Or guessing if Big Clive is going to slash himself in this glass and metal. So keep in mind this is a 240 volt supply. I'm not sure what the current was of this lamp. I don't think it was all that high. Certainly the base didn't seem to get very hot, which is good because it suggested it wasn't that high a current. The resistor, however, its colour code is black, 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 suggesting that has been getting cookie hot. Okay, right, let's uh, see if we can hike that out by chopping it off from there. And there. Yeah, see what I mean? That's it's not terribly can you read that? No, it's 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 a four four band resistor where they literally are all black pretty much. So let's uh see if we can This is where actually you know little crop clips are quite nice. So I might bring in the cheapo meter here. It does have its advantages. Cheapo meter so let's stick a crop clip on there, squeeze it shut, and there, and we'll just pan it round until we find get a resistance. It's 30k, which would be orange, orange, well, orange, black orange, wouldn't it? Uh, so definitely, definitely, they're they're not the slightest bit orange at all, are they? They're just they're just brown and black, aren't they? So um, yeah. I wonder how long that would have lasted just before that resistor baked. Um, but uh, technically speaking, we could we could theoretically work out the um, current. If we went on the basis that the strike voltage is, is about 50 volts, and it's going to be that way most of the time. Where's the calculator? Let's not put the calculator in the pile of broken glass. So if uh, it's 240 minus a strike, let's say 200 volts, uh, 200 volts divided by that resistor of 30k equals a current of about 6 milliamps uh, times the 200 volts across the resistor equals that resistor was dissipating about 1.3 watts, which is quite a lot for that little resistor. I would rate the resistor at about half a watt, so it was being grilled in there. You know, it wasn't having a good time. So, um, yeah. Interesting thing, that's really what, what's what's involved in these lamps. This I uh, still this is going whiter. This is definitely going whiter, isn't it? It's definitely oxidized. It's probably some toxic, it's probably covered in cyanide powder or something like that. Uh so if you know what's involved in these electrodes, because the both sides do look pretty similar, don't they? No. Uh if you know what's involved in creating that flicker effect and what this coating is, then uh Leave a comment down below, it'd be quite interesting to know. But yeah, that was quite fun actually, quite enjoyed that.